Yo, what's going on YouTube? It is your boy GZTV back with another video and today we are going to be talking about the 1984 American comedy horror film directed by Joe Dante, written by Chris Columbus and starting Zach Galligan, Phoebe Cates, Hoyt Axon, Polly Holiday, and Francis Lee McCain with Howie Mandel actually providing the voice of Gizmo, the main Mogwai character who you see in the movie poster here. It's a really interesting movie. This is a movie that was heavily featured in my childhood. I watch this movie all the time. I just never really got the chance to talk about it on the channel. And, yeah, it's it's interesting, to say the least. Shout out to Steven Spielberg. He's a great um, classic. So, yeah, uh, I don't really have much to say. Let's get into it. So, this movie follows the plot of a struggling inventor by the name of Randall Pelter, who visits a Chinatown antique store hoping to find a Christmas present for his son, Billy. When we first hear Billy, I think of like a little kid, especially with what he got him. But the movie is kind of weird. It takes a really weird approach. It's like kind of unique in its own sort of way. Inside, Randall encounters a small furry creature called a mog mogwai, which is Cantonese for devil. It's, and obviously an American wouldn't know that, but... Yeah, it's super interesting that they kind of create this character. I obviously Mogwai is a real word, but it's it's weird. It's it's really unique. I think it's really cool. It's obviously got some fantasy aspects to it, but this is a really fun movie, man. So the owner, Mr. Wing, refuses to sell Randall the creature, but his grandson secretly does. Takes the money, goes behind his back. They need this money. They're a struggling family. They kind of open this store and hopes to make. Not necessarily a fortune, but obviously put food on the table. And you guys know how that goes. <clears throat> His son realized how important it was for them to make money. And he, this, I mean, this is a pretty precious creature, though. Like, it's far in between. Few in between, far, I don't know what the hell the term is. But, um, you know, he warns Randall to remember three important rules. Do not expose the Mogwai to light, especially sunlight, which will kill it. Do not let it come in contact with water. And above all, the most important, never feed it after midnight. And slowly throughout the movie, we figure out what happens when the creature is exposed to these three things. And one of them is, ex honestly, two of them are pretty ugly. So, <clears throat> yeah, Randall returns home to Kingston Falls, where he gives the Mogwai to Billy as a pet. And again, it's like a Christmas present. And Billy, is like, Billy works in a local bank. He's like a bank teller or something. He's like a receptionist i thought he was like a little kid but i guess he's a has a real job now he's like out of school and stuff so <laughs> it's kind of weird how they went in that direction but I, I don't know it's 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 okay man you got to bring christmas cheer somehow and that is interesting too that this is a horror movie that happened during halloween there's obviously a couple movies like silent night we watched there's a couple other movies that I've watched, like Krampus, that we've watched on the channel that happened during Christmas. So, if you're a horror fan, Gremlins is a great movie to watch on Christmas. It's not really a horror movie. I guess it is a little scary. There's definitely some, like, terrorizing figure, or multiple figures. So, Bill, yeah, uh, Billy fears that his dog Barney will be put down by widowed miser Mrs. Deagle, who's like the negative Nancy of the community. You know, she doesn't let anyone have shit, she's always in a pissed off mood. Yeah, so Randall names the Mogwai Gizmo and explains the three rules to his son. So, Gizmo is friendly and docile, but when Billy's young friend Pete accidentally spills water over Gizmo, five more Mogwai spawn from his back, a more troublemaking sort led by the aggressive Stripe, named for the tuft of fur on his head, and Stripe is the guy in the shadows there that ends up turning into an actual, like, gremlin. They're not Mogwais anymore. They turn into gremlins eventually. We'll get to that. But we figure out what happens when you pour water. Uh, you do figure out what happens with the bright light. You know, he kind of gets irritated. They don't like bright light. If the light's too bright, they die. Sunlight kills them. We know that. But bright light's obviously super irritating and, like, painful to them. They have, like, super sensitive skin or whatever. But uh, when you pour water on them, they spawn new ones, which is fucking insane. Like, I don't know why this Cantonese man would have let this out into the world. Like... What the fuck? Or why his grandson would have let it out in the world, knowing the responsibility, knowing what it's capable of. And, I mean, they know the rules, so they know what it can do. So, yeah. Um, let's see. So, Billy shows one of the Mogwai to his former elementary school science teacher, Mr. Hansen, spawning another Mogwai, on which Hansen experiments the troublemaking kind they spawn him so he can use that, and... Obviously, Billy can just take his pet home because Gizmo's the only one that's, like, nice out of the bunch. 
So, but back at home, Stripe and his fellow Mogwai trick Billy into feeding them after midnight by severing the power cord on his alarm clock. And then, like, oh, it's like 11.40 or something like that. But really, the time has stopped and it hasn't moved forward. And they literally tricked him into feeding them late at night. <clears throat> so now we figure out what happens when they when you feed them after midnight. And it's the worst of all. So... They form cocoons, as does Hansen's Mogwai, which soon hatch, emerging as mischievous, dark green reptilian monsters called gremlins, who are, who then torture Gizmo and attack Billy's mother, Lynn. Hansen is killed by his gremlin. These are, like, bad news. These aren't just, like... It's not really a kid's movie anymore. Like, it kind of starts as a cheerful, like, holiday film, but then it turns into, oh, these things are fucking killing people and, like, victimizing everyone, terrorizing the city the community, whatever. Sorry, there's shit on my desk. But, um, yeah, Lynn and Billy are able to kill off the gremlins, except for Stripe, who escapes to a local YMCA where they have a pool. And it's kind of funny how they have these unique kind of plot devices. I mean, the longer they sit in the water as well, literally a drop of water hit Gizmo and he had five of them. Imagine jumping in a whole pool, like being submerged. That, that created th hundreds of thousands of these things. So, yeah, Stripe jumps into the swimming pool, spawning an army of gremlins who wreak havoc in Kingston Falls. So now we have a problem, obviously. Many people are injured or outright killed by the gremlins' rampage, including Mrs. Deagle. That was a satisfying thing because she was kind of a piece of shit. Like, didn't give any sort of sympathy towards anyone, only cared about herself, all this stuff. Um, so Billy reports this to the police, but they prove to be no help as they don't believe his story, even after he shows them Gizmo. It's just the classic, like, a kid, oh, in this case, it's a grown-ass man. It's a classic when a kid says, like, they saw something super, of, like, a fantasy nature and no one believes them. It's kind of like that. So, <clears throat> as Billy, uh, or yeah, uh, after he shows them Gizmo, they still don't believe him. It doesn't make sense. Like, they've never seen this Mogwai creature before, but I don't know. So... As Billy rescues his girlfriend, Kate Beringer, they hide in the now-abandoned bank where Kate reveals to Billy and Gizmo why she hates Christmas. When she was nine years old, her father went missing on Christmas Eve and did not come home on Christmas Day either. Several days, he was found dead in their chimney while dressed as Santa Claus. Maybe having got stuck, fall, fell down, no one knows. So she's, she's not really a bah humbug character, she just has negative memories kind of associated with Christmas. So she doesn't really understand the joy behind it. Um, and honestly, I didn't even realize that she was his girlfriend, and she was working at this Doherty's Tavern, and all the gremlins invaded, and yeah, shit got kind of crazy. They invaded it, and they're throwing a party. It was kind of funny, but like, it is funny. There's definitely some comedic elements. It's definitely a little silly, you know. So, planning to surprise her and her mother, he had accidentally slipped and broken his neck while yeah, climbing down the chimney. I kind of forgot she told everyone exactly what happened which is it's super fucked up kind of dark actually for something like that to be told but still suffering from post-traumatic stress, stress disorder kate confesses this is how she lost her belief in santa claus most kids you know they naturally grow up and they realize oh santa's not real my parents are doing this because how would a ps5 be made by a bunch of elves how is that possible i don't know sony makes them like what are we talking <laughs> Or did they send some Sony workers there to help the elves? And, I don't know. <laughs> it's funny. But uh, Billy and Kate discover that the town has fallen silent and the gremlins are watching Snow White and the Seven Dwarves in the local theater, which is so fucking funny to me. It's so funny. They set off a natural gas explosion by, like, lighting this piece of cloth and, like, opening the gas pipes. And it, it kind of blows up. Uh, incinerating all the gremlins except for Stripe, who left to camp commandeer more candy at a Montgomery Ward store across the street. So, good thing he got out of there, because he would have died and the movie would have ended about, I don't know, an hour through, probably would have ended. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Stripe is obviously, like, the main antagonist. Obviously, you have a whole group of gremlins, but eventually it becomes kind of like a third act slash boss battle type of thing where they're fighting Stripe. <coughs> So as morning approaches, they follow Stripe into the department store, where Stripe attempts to use a fountain to spawn more gremlins. So Gizmo, driving a toy car, crashes into a skylight, exposing Stripe to sunlight, killing him, but not until he makes a final attempt to injure Billy, before collapsing into a pile of bubbling goo, and he, like, landed in the water. At first, they thought he was going to revive, come back to life, and kind of, like, spawn more creatures. But... <coughs> 
There's a local news report on the days of mysterious <clears throat> tragedies um, kind of ensue. Mr. Wing reclaims Gizmo at the Peltor home. <clears throat> he saw what happened. What is in my throat, dude? What the fuck? Okay. So he realizes they're not responsible enough to take care of this because the whole, like, community-wide tragedy took place and it could have spread to the entire country. Like, this has potential... That, this had a potential to be, like, an insane disaster. So... He scolds the Peltzers for their negligence and criticizes Western society for its carelessness with nature. So there's kind of a little bit of an... It seems it seems kind of forced, but there's a little bit of like a social commentary in there that the show creator, the movie creators decided to include. Um, however, as he turns to leave, Gizmo, having bonded with Billy, bids him goodbye. It's, it's He's cute. Gizmo's super cute, man. A touched Mr. Wing then concedes that Billy may be ready one day, and until then, Gizmo will be waiting... So that kind of has like sequel potential, and I think they had a couple new movies. They had a new one uh, in 1990, uh, and then I think they have an animated series. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of different stuff that kind of happened. They were thinking about rebooting, having prequels. We're not going to get into that. Let's get into kind of my thoughts and review. I'm just getting into my thoughts, review, whatever. Uh, of the movie, um, I like it, um, it's, it's not only fun, also a sly series of send-ups, effectively parodying many elemental film storylines that are cool, um, Gremlins did this partly through depictions of mysterious worlds, the shop in Chinatown, and tyrannical elderly women like Mrs. Steve Wood had a lot of appreciative elements to, like, earlier film. Uh, the rule in which a mogwai cannot eat after midnight was inspired by fairy tales. Uh, the final scenes parody classic horror films. So everything kind of ties together there. And I, I love the connection. So uh, Kate's speech about her father was kind of connected with the great tradition of 1950s sick jokes. Um, yeah, it's a wickedly funny and slightly sick ride. A most original work. We're aware at every moment that someone is trying to entertain us. Playfulness abounds. Um... There's a couple things that I'm a little mixed on. I mean, the film is far more interested in showing off its knowledge of movie lore and making random jokes than in providing consistent entertainment. Maybe they do focus a little too much on, like, callbacks from other movies and references and stuff. But I still like it in that sense. I mean, it's funniest when being most nasty, and that can be a good or a bad thing in this movie, and in movies in general. So, make room for adorable Gremlins dolls on the shelves and start counting the take for another calculated audience pleaser from the Steven Spielberg, Frank Marshall, Kathleen Kennedy team. But that's all that's here in this showy, showy display of technical talent, otherwise nearly heedless of dramatic concerns. It's not super dramatic. It's a pretty straightforward movie. It's just trying to like create a new story. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it's interesting. Uh, not a lot of people like it. I mean, the film's bit gross to some people it gives some people the x it's what it, it is what it is despite being i mean it, it's set in a picture postcard town and blending the feel of it's a wonderful life uh, a clip of which appears in gremlins with that of the blob it kind of some people say the film is negated by too vivid violence and mayhem i guess so i don't know um yeah uh, some people actually like made appearances in a later film that reviewed the movie which was funny um yeah, uh, you know, the depictions of violence and greed, you know, such as death scenes, Kate's speech, and the gremlin's gluttony, it's a little dark for a kid's movie, it's kind of marketed to be a kid's movie, even though there's monsters, it's supposed to be kind of family friendly, like it should be for everyone, but it is a little fucked up, which is why people tend to sway on the dislike side sometimes, see, some people don't like the comic value, um, there's a kind of a satire of some characteristics of Western civilization. Um, Westerners may take too much satisfaction from violence, uh, all this type of things. Things can be said of this film. You know, people learn things from this film, I guess. Um, yeah, it can also, this movie can also be interpreted as a statement against technology and that some characters, such as Billy's father, are overly dependent on it and are, like, eager and wanting to invent more of it. Um, yeah, um... Uh, Mr. Wing is shown to have a strong distaste for television. Um, oh, he's watching the TV. You taught him how to do that now. There's a lot of interesting things you can take away from this film. Um, 
yeah, uh, the Gr Gremlins is kind of like an anti-technology film, almost. Uh, the film is meant to express a number of observations of society by having the Gremlin characters shift in what they are meant to represent. Um, you know, at different times they are depicted as teenagers, the wealthy establishment, or fans of Disney films. So, yeah, it's kind of funny. Like, Gremlins almost, like, represent the monster and the bad things about society. And, like, these this larger group of people representing a large group of society. I think it's kind of genius, honestly. I mean, there's kind of a connection between the microwave scene and urban legends about pets dying in microwave ovens as well. It's, like, so many different Easter eggs, so many different references that you just kind of have to catch. I think it's really interesting. Uh, the portrayal of this urban legend in the film is pretty successful. I mean, it, it seems kind of terrible, though. I don't know. Um, this is indeed a scene that is thought of as being one of the film's most violent depictions because a fucking creature literally blows up in a microwave. Um, you know, there's some fear fear that the film might encourage children to try similar things with their pets with stuff like this. Like, people actually thought that this movie had the world in a chokehold, which to an extent, it kind of did. It was a pretty big box office hit. Yeah, there was a lot of good marketing for it, but, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, two or three good jokes, three or four neat scenes, lots of detail, but overall a manic melee of pyrotechnics that make, made random grabs for my sympathy and failed to hold my attention. There, there were a couple of moments that waned my attention a little bit. A bit more coherent thought, and who knows, if it could have been better, if it was a little more cohesive. Um, yeah, again, violence. Uh, the plot is thin, and the pacing is askew. Um, you know, the dark humor contrasting against the ideal Christmas setting was kind of cool, and something that people kind of noticed. I know I'm kind of rambling, but there's a lot to say about this film. Um... Criminals, Gremlins has corny special effects, to be honest, for the time. I mean, the film will tend to appeal to children more so than the adults. Uh, the acting was a bit meh. I don't know. It's fun. It gets a couple jokes off and kind of moves on. Uh, Gremlins gets praise year in and year out, though. I mean, it's still really good. Whether you choose to see it as a statement on consumer culture or simply a special effects heavy popcorn flick, Gremlins is a minor classic. It's definitely something that you should consider as a classic in the horror genre. So, with that, I'm out. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to go to the gym here in a little bit. i got to do some studying. I mean, it's been a pretty busy week for me in terms of school. <clears throat> so, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Not much needs to be said. I'm out, guys. Peace.